carbonize or attempt to carbonize two two of these pieces. I'm gonna put it in the crucible. I'm gonna first put some powdered carbon down on the bottom so it doesn't burn the bottom of it. And I'm gonna use these to pack around it to keep it sort of in shape and also keep the air out so that doesn't burn to nothing. And I'm gonna um, crank it up to probably 800 degrees and keep it for four hours. Last time I had it buried, that little piece, I had it buried in the carbon. I don't have enough carbon crushed up to completely cover all of that. I wanna sort of stand it on its end. So I'll get back when I pack the furnace and show you how I sort of laid it all out in there. <coughs> okay, so I've got the fine stuff right at the bottom. I've got that wrapped around the outside, both pieces, and I've covered up the rest with um, carbon. I haven't been scraping the sides of the walls and they've um, building up a layer of carbon all the way around the crucible. Same with under here. There's probably some really good carbon that's hanging out on those bits. But we'll keep it going. I'm gonna bolt it down to stop the air getting in. And I'll get back tomorrow when it's finished. Okay, I just lit the burnt furnace and we're already serving on 49, 50 degrees. Well, the air in there is a bit. The flame heat's hot. 80. So I'll leave it in there for about four hours today and see what happens. Last time it was um, two hours. Okay, furnace has been on for an hour and we're already at 500 degrees. Oh, we're a good heap away from that furnace. So this goes up to 500 degrees and then we can sort of work it out by distance. of this at that distance. Second experiment today is um, going to make some zinc hexacyanophorate, but this time um, in the potassium hexacyanophorate, I put two grams of the feather carbon and one gram of the um, graphite. I should have not put the graphite because I think it's floating around the top there, so it hasn't really gone in. And it's gone a greenish colour, so I suggest. Um, the feather carbon was activated with zinc chloride and probably there's trace elements of zinc chloride still floating around in there. So I'll give that a stir for an hour. It's been in there for about 25 minutes now stirring. Got my zinc sulfate, that's been there for 25 minutes but it's got, it's 500 mils. Okay, 500 mils and it's still not dissolved in 20 minutes it's just garden variety so it takes a little bit to dissolve so you got to make sure that's all dissolved because in the dripping funnel it collects down here and jams it up and you have to keep coming back to sort of adjust it so it's better if that's completely dried out that thing only costs $30 for a 500 mil one I just rigged up a little cheap frame. It works. And you don't have to stand over there smelling all that cyanide fumes. Well, you can, I can smell it. It's just like, I don't like the smell of it. <sighs> so there you go. So, a bit busy today. Okay, it's been two hours and it's cherry red in there. That's probably hot enough. I 
get up that hot last time. Okay, since it's um, that hot, I reckon I can safely turn it off now. It's been two hours in there. I don't want to graphicize it, just carbonize it. Okay, I've been stirring the carbon in the potassium hexacyanoferrate for an hour and a half. I've got the zinc sulfate in the dripper, so let's start the dripping process. There we go, that's a good drip. Okay, that gives us really fine particles. Graphite's still floating around the top there, you can sort of see it. So it would be interesting to see what sort of um, battery this will make. Alright, I'll get back. Particles have settled down, I'm going to filter this up. Normally I um, siphon off the liquid to about there. And then... Um, refill it and wash it but this time I'm going to filter it. As you can see the black carbon layer underneath so that it goes right around. I think that disturbance there is where the magnet is, that high spot. Last night it was at the 200 mil mark and it hasn't dropped much. It's not that thick. It should be still dropping but it takes a while to get even further down. Um, that's some graphite floating around the top there and around the edges. So I think most of the graphite went in. There was a one gram of graphite and two grams of feather carbon, which I think was contaminated with zinc chloride. That's why it's green. But it's probably sort of looking like that color. That's just a bit more paler. So we don't know yet. And for the furnace, See if the carbon felt. I haven't opened it. I'm about to open it. Poor furnace is um, breaking apart with the extreme heat. That was the calcium illuminate cement. But being that red, calcium illuminate should hold 1100 degrees, but we must be exceeding 1100 because it's just breaking down. It's still sort of intact, but I gotta find a different refractory before I lose all this, this stuff here. So I'll um, unseal it and see what we got. <coughs> okay, I just popped the lid on the crucible. The crucible takes a beating. Look at the um, state of the outside. It's got some thick layers splitting off of the metal. Um, the washers, if you can see them, through the hole there, are fused. The poor little bolts, that washer's fused to it. The bolts are sort of elongated, so there's some pressure. Carbon build up there. And right down there, we can sort of see the carbon felt. That's the only piece I can actually see. wonder if it's held. So I'll um, fish all those things out. They're a really funny looking colour. We'll check those things with the multimeter in a minute when I get them all out. There's some build up of carbons around the outside. I won't scrape that stuff off because that sort of protects the carbon from the metal. 
Look how fine that carbon powder is. It's sort of, uh, well, it's sort of, if you can see it, it's floating out of there. I just tipped it in there. That was a bunch of carbons I had, which I ground up, soaked in zinc chloride, and then furnace. This is like the second time it's been, third time actually. I'm down in there. Some weird colouring. That piece was at the bottom. It's got some weird stuff growing in the centre. That would have been the fine stuff coming up through there. And look, I got my felts. They're pretty robust. They're carbonised, you can sort of see through it though now. It's like um, a carbon web of material. Very light. The other piece, they shrunk a bit, uh, a heap, like 50% of their size. I still got the pattern. <laughs> now we'll get the multimeter and we'll check it out. Okay, got the multimeter. We're set on the 200 range. Check these things, these are always conductive. They were 0.9, but they lose that 0.9 when you crush them up. They're not that great. Oh, there's a bit of carbon felt stuck with that one. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's hard to do it with one hand. Yeah, I'll put it back on that block. So we're about one push harder. 1.1. Depends on the piece of carbon, I think. And what we're interested in, carbon felt. Oh. I'll double it up. Uh, I don't want to punch holes in it. Well, that's not too bad, 7.5. It's on a one layer, and they're spread out. Check another spot. 6.6. .6. can feel the cement coming through that. But that actually turned out well. And this stuff, I don't know what the resistance in there is. But that's um, extremely fine. We can try putting the probes in. Oh, it's too fine, we can't push any weight on it. Oh, there you go. So it's doable. Some thicker felt may help. It's sort of, it's gonna wrinkle off I think. So there we go. Yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Ah. The video camera is rotated and won't rotate back. <laughs> Alright. <sighs> video stupid thing rotating. Yeah, draining it. I forgot the feather carbon sticks to magnets, but this time it's um, aligned itself. Some on the north side and some on the south side, whichever one that is. Nothing in the middle. That's just a standard coffee filter. Still got a little bit of water in there. I'll flush it through with some water. Just once off, I think. 
That was the container I used for the blue middle three. That carbon at the um, the powdered carbon at the bottom of the crucible with a bunch of carbons I made previously, which was some bread and sugar carbon, what was cooked for four hours. Sugar carbon, what measured at 12 ohms. Some uh, have no idea what the top stuff is, but some bread. <laughs> Uh, some more bread and sugar carbon, six hours in the furnace, and some coffee and sugar. That would be coffee grinds for six hours. So all of that was sort of put in. It was put in the other batch I made with that real small piece of carbon felt as well. So it's had about three or four burnings. So not a bad result. <laughs> It was um, probably too thin a material, but it could be um, useful. I'll um, make a fill eventually out of this stuff and see what we get. Because that was only probably around about, well, uh, less than half a tank. I've already used that um, propane cylinder. So we're probably looking at mm, $6 for the fuel gas, maybe. even Not even that couple of dollars for this stuff and some time where you just put it in and just leave it so feasible maybe so we'll check it out um, the resistance isn't as good as this stuff the bought stuff but that's a lot thicker than this stuff so we could probably layer it up and see what we get yeah, I'll get back when I've dried that other stuff cells are ready, they've been sitting in the solution, the electrolyte, same electrolyte as that stuff. One thing I noticed, there was um, some zinc hexacyanoferrate on the plain one. We didn't put any carbon in along the side. I think the binder didn't stick too well with it. And it's gone into the liquid. And it's decided to plate itself. Not just that negative electrode, but also on um, that negative electrode. Where it doesn't do it on these ones, no coating. Hmm, which is um interesting because why is it wanting to coat itself on the negative electrode? Bizarre. I haven't even connected them up. They're just sitting in solution. There is a 0 0.3 voltage on each one of them. I'll get back. I've got the coffee going. Okay, I'm back. So I've only got these leads, a couple of them left, which are intact. These are metal, and I was having some difficulty with this cell, that's why I haven't tested any anymore. So I've got those two left. Um, I'm waiting on some alligator heads, and I'm going to make some copper ones, because these are steel cord wires. So, as um, Cyrex, no. K-Rex 2 pointed out, the leads are very important. I didn't think there would be much of a difference, but apparently there is. So, leads are important. Uh, I'm wondering why they put small leads on that end and big, thick, juicy ones on the other end, so, which makes it hard to deliver any good milliamps through those things. Oh, and that one looks like it's broken. I don't know, it's still intact, just. So I'll um, post this video a bit later after we look at the um, zinc hexacyanoferrate in mixed with the carbon later. And um, get back if you want to see it tested with those leads or wait another couple of weeks. Uh, probably next week the leads will rock up. I sourced them from Australia, but we got like lockdowns and Shipping delays, apparently. Okay.